Today we're going to look at break-even analysis. Break-even analysis allows a business to calculate how many units does it need to sell to cover its costs. I'm going to play the role of a rock music promoter. Uh, I'm promoting a concert by Def Leppard, uh, one of my favorite bands. You should like them. Um, so what I've done is I have drawn a break-even graph as you will see many, many times. If you've done IGCSE, this is a refresher. If you're doing SL uh, business management, this is the type of question which quite often comes up on paper too, because you don't really cover that much uh, in the way of accounting type material. So it's very, very popular with the uh, examiner. So what I've assumed is that fixed costs are 400,000, the variable costs are 20 dollars per ticket, and that the selling price per ticket is 100 dollars. Okay, and that the size of the concert venue is 10,000. Um, so I have drawn the axes. On the vertical axis, you will see the cost and revenue. Uh, I've labeled that in dollars. Um, on the horizontal axis, I have booked units, or in this case for concert, would be tickets. And I've drawn that all the way up to 10,000. Now, we only draw three lines on the break even graph itself. The first one I've drawn. This is the first one I always start with, is the fixed costs. So the fixed costs are $400,000. Now, the two fixed costs which may apply to a concert might be that guarantee, which is paid to the band, and secondly, let's say you have to rent the hall where the concert is going to be put on. So even if no one turns up to the concert, you still have to pay the owner of the hall money. All right. The uh, variable costs of $20 per ticket they could be uh, paying the artist, uh, maybe $10 per ticket, but more importantly, paying, say, Ticketmaster, the ticket agent, maybe $10 per ticket. Okay, so fixed cost plus variable cost equals total cost. So, therefore, if we sell 10,000 tickets at a variable cost of $20, that adds up to $200,000. $200,000 plus $400,000, that gives you $600,000, as you can see here. Now, I don't draw a variable cost line going from here to here. That's because that's an extra line and would be confusing, because the variable cost is already shown here. Now, obviously, we label our diagrams. You can see here, I label the fixed cost, total cost, and then we have the sales line. If you don't label the diagrams, uh, in a six mark question on the final exam, you may only get four marks or three marks because you didn't label the diagram correctly. And it seems a shame not to. Uh, $100 per ticket times uh, 10,000, that would move all the way up in a straight line to $1 million. This is the break even point. Okay, The break even point is approximately 5,000 units or tickets. And the break even revenue is $500,000. This is where the profit exists. This is where the business makes a loss. Now, you could read off this. How much profit or loss does the business make if it sells 8,000 tickets? Boom. So we can read the difference between here and here. That's the profit. If they said 3,000 tickets, you just go to here. This is the sale. This is the cost. Obviously, this is the loss. Okay? The margin of safety is the difference between the break even point and production, or in this case, the let's say the total size of the hall. So the break even point is 5,000. The total number of tickets sold, or which could be sold, are 10,000. So the margin of safety is 5,000. So if the concert went ahead and they only sold 6,000 tickets, well, obviously they would make a profit, a small profit, but nevertheless a profit. Now, if the break even point was 9,999 tickets, obviously then the margin of safety would be one good. So in that case, obviously you have to try and increase the selling price or reduce some of the costs, but it may not be possible to reduce the costs. Now, obviously for a one-off event, the big advantage of this is it's quite simple to produce. We can change the selling price and obviously the uh, sales line will move either to the left or will move to the right. So if we increase the selling price, obviously this will move to the left and we introduce like 1.2 million up here. If we reduce the selling price, say $80 a ticket, obviously the sales line would now go to here and the break-even point would move in this direction. 
it's very easy for a one-off project. The difficulty with using uh, the break-even chart is that in the long run, costs do not stay the same. If you have a factory, and the factory is at full production, and you want to open a bigger factory or a new factory, what always would happen to the fixed cost? The fixed cost would move up like this, okay? Um, which obviously then moves the break-even point. Uh, also, economies of scale and diseconomies of scale exist, which means that the total cost does not move in a direct uh, proportion to the, the production. So what might happen, for example, in the case of uh, economies of scale, would be that the line starts to go a little bit more like that. It still increases, but it goes a little bit like that. With this economy of scale, obviously then it will go more like that. Okay, because obviously with this economy of scale, the uh, variable cost increases as production increases. Um, and if you are someone like Carrefour, it's probably quite difficult for Carrefour to estimate the uh, break-even point on every single product every single day. They sell maybe 40,000 in my local Carrefour here. Um, so it's probably quite difficult then. So what they're probably more interested in is what are the sales per square feet or by square meter and the cost per square meter. And then each day you're saying, Maybe we need to sell $100 uh, to break even per square meter or per square foot. Right. But nevertheless, the uh, break even is a very useful tool for giving the business a very good guide as to what they need to do to be able to cover their costs. Okay, and that's it.